What made us leave Eagle Mountain was yeah. being totally tired of a mundane life and ready for a new adventure. Um, it was a new decade and a new time for a new life. Um, 10 years in Eagle Mountain, 11 years was too many. So we were ready um, to head up to Oregon. Well, as far as looking for gold, yeah, we're trying to find gold, but we're also trying to not work a nine to five job and be able to support our life of living on our own. Living on our right. own and smoking as much weed as we want. Yeah. That's kind of a nice perk. The, the history of this area is Gold Hill is like one of the richest gold places ever. Like they found like 35,000 ounces in this area. Back when gold was yeah, when they were mining 20 all bucks this. an ounce. Yeah. Now it's Imagine 1700 that. plus an ounce. Yeah. From what we have been told about Sardine Creek in particular, which is the creek that we're on, we're on Right Fork, Sardine Creek. Um, the gold in this area is chunky gold um, and it's harder to find. You have to find it. It's not just going to show up in your pan. You've got to go pay attention to the different um, layouts of the creek and where it's running and, and what rocks or what logs or whatever might change the position of, of the flow of the water and find the pockets where they lay. Um, a lot of these trees you'll see that line the um, banks of the creek come up by root. Um, they're really super heavy and they fall over. And they the mostly do that because the old miners used a process called hydraulics, hydraulicking, and they would take high pressure water and spray the side of the bank and it would basically wash all the dirt. But Those when spots. they do that, it causes the roots to be exposed. And by exposing the roots of these trees, now you've taken all their dirt and all of their root structure is exposed and it makes them very weak. And so the wind can blow and that's when these giant redwoods literally come crashing down in one, in one yeah, swell swoop. That's a widow maker. I mean, panning, panning is just the testing of areas, you know, like, you don't want to pan all day in the same area. If you find golden area, then then you set up some some other way of moving more material. Yeah. Panning is just a way of testing a small area of ground to see if you can find gold. Mm -hmm. It's the fastest way to Test. get the dirt out and get down to a piece of gold if it's in that ground. Just a little bit anyway. We use a, a high banker and it's a dredge combo. If you plug in the core or the hose in the back, it goes to a water pump that sucks out the ground underneath the creek water instead of just putting dirt in the back. Black sand is more magnetic and um, heavy. It's a heavier sand and um, all of the heavies. Gold is very, very heavy. Even flower gold will sink to the bottom. Um, the heavy, the gold is the heaviest thing. In there. That or platinum, I think. I would say we hope to do this the rest of the summer. Um, we can, as long as we can. <clears throat> yeah, if we can make it actually produce gold that we can sell. Um, and there are a couple places in town that you can go to. Um, Armadillo Mining is one of our favorite spots, and it's a local um, miners hangout. Um, if we can keep it going and find enough gold to sustain, then we'll just keep doing what we do. Um, so we live minimally anyways, but if we are not able to produce, um, we have sent, set a limit for ourselves on our bank account. That means we go back to work. Well, once you uh, find it in your pan, you just like get addicted to it as far as uh, wanting to find more, I guess. They call it gold fever. They've always, even the old timers called it gold fever. And um, it's just seeing that flash in the pan, I guess, gets you excited. Well, just tonight, you know, when we saw those in there, that was, it was fun to see it. You know, yeah. It sucks when you don't. 